As a designer, uh, my role is to inspire people. You have to have that culture of people, people having the ability to fail, to learn from their mistakes, and then to make it better. There's got to be a clear, strong vision from the person at the top of the company saying, you know, we have to have great design. That has to be a priority. The greatest ideas come from unexpected areas. can companies get their engineers and their designers to work so well together that they create amazing products? I think having uh, both designers and engineers uh, giving them the, the opportunity to fail and, and restart again and accept that as part of the process is really a key element. Recruitment is a big issue um, because if you have someone who's working very specifically on their role and they're very, that's often where people are very comfortable. But when we're recruiting, and I think all of us are fairly common in this way, we're looking for people with diverse backgrounds because that means they're going to be more willing to kind of jump out of the functional role maybe that would be tradition for an engineer or for a designer or a product manager. In our little team of 60 people now, we have 17 nationalities, but to me that's really critical to our success as a design organization is having these diverse views, diverse input, and it's a really rich mix that we can bounce ideas off of one another. We have a global perspective of where our products need to be going, and it's, it's just a, a really rewarding type of environment having that type of interest and, and influence from all over the world right. in our small team. You know, one of the frustrating parts as to be a designer in a consultancy is that you, you come up with this great vision, it looks beautiful, you throw it over the fence, two years <laughs> later it shows up on shelves and it looks like shit. The engineers you know? have um, <laughs> ruined it. No, but I think huh? that's where the gap is, right? <laughs> where, where the communication is not happening fluidly. So right. to me, the team um, on glass right now is, is ideal because we actually even sit right next to each other. We have uh, prototyping spaces that are dedicated to, to engineering and, and design, but we come to each other's spaces. Every Thursday we bring in beer and we, we, we debate. Um, I've always found that's a wonderful way to sort of get teams to work more closely <laughs> together. It's amazing. Beer and sandwiches. It's amazing. It's, it, yeah, it's really important that to have this back and forth and not having the mentality of just like, I'm done. Right. Um, I think to me, as a designer, I'm done when the first customer opens the box, or not even there. You know, it's, it's about following up and understanding um, users. Um, so I think having that type of, uh, being able to have designers and engineers working really closely together, and I mean not just working closely together, I mean literally like sitting next to each other. Right. That's really when you can move fast. Run brainstorms, but invite people who have maybe nothing to do with the project, are in, in different groups, but are tangentially related. Um, I think there's a tendency to invite people who have expertise in the area to, to, to contribute, but some of the greatest ideas, it promotes the culture, and some of the greatest ideas come from unexpected areas. I think keeping in mind to really design for evolution from the be beginning, embracing the fact that you, you're gonna have to stay nimble. Um, this is why we designed Glass to be able to evolve over time. We can't be as quick as the software updates that are happen monthly, but you know, with, with Glass this past year, we released you know, a new collection of frames, new sh sunshades, and things like that. And it's also good for the user. And if you think about something that you wear, um, you know, fashion cycles changes really quickly, and seasonality mm -hmm. too. So being able to address those needs are really, really important to us. In design, it makes a lot of sense to preserve ambiguity as late as you can in the process. And what that means is there's a tendency often, especially with engineers, I'm an engineer too, is to want to fixate on a solution pretty quickly. But if you can preserve this ambiguity as late in the process, you're able to pivot very quickly because you're never getting things right from the very beginning. And this requires a creative process because if you're constantly trying to make sure that you understand the landscape, all the user needs, all these things, and you're trying to you know, get all of the information so that you have the best things when you have to start winnowing down, it forces creativity. I have to say, I, when I joined um, Google X and, and the Glass project, it was a science project. I came into a room and people were wearing these crazy 3D printed scuba masks with phones and cables attached to them, and it definitely freaked <laughs> me out. My biggest concern wasn't how can we make the technology work, um, which should be a big concern because it was almost impossible, but my biggest concern was walking into a glasses store and seeing the thousands of styles you can choose from. There's a reason for that, um, and that 
you know, I was trying to figure out how can we design something that people can make their own. And um, that was one of the key pr principles of the design, it was scalability. That's why... Scalability meaning lots of different variations I, of it? Yeah, or? I mean, it's, it's, maybe it's a stupid word, but at least I, I use it internally and, and people get it. But um, it's about designing for evolution. Right. Um, so in this case, it's hard to see maybe, but there's a little screw here, and you can actually remove the frame and attach different kinds of frames. This was not an afterthought. This was core from the very beginning that we knew that not everybody is going to want to walk around and look the same, especially with something on your face. When is glass going to be available, and how much is it going to cost? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, one's listening, so don't worry. It's between you and me. Um, uh, soon, and soon. it's going to be less than $1,500. <laughs> I'm going to have to cancel my holidays. That's great. 